All right, we got the countdown, so we are in. We are recording now. Now I have to be a professional. That is okay, Aaliyah. We are recording it, so if you miss stuff while you're babysitting, you can always go back and look at it. This is just a, a lesson today. There won't be any homework for it until next week when we complete the lesson, so you're good. Um, we are starting section 1.8 in the book, which is combinations of functions. Uh, nothing too difficult today. Combinations of functions. We are literally adding, subtracting, and multiplying. We are saving, dividing till next week, and we're saving composition. Oh, look, I put functing instead of functions. I don't even know what a functing is. Let's funk stuff up. Functions. Um, so the division and composition of functions part we will do next week, and it'll be all part of the same assignment, right? So I'm not giving you the assignment today. I would rather you get in stuff that's not done. Those of you who've done all your work, right, you're golden. You don't have to even worry, right? You got get to take the weekend off of math. Those of you who have not, well, you have a busy weekend. I hope you make the best of it. So what we're talking about literally here is the sum difference, difference, product, and quotient of functions. And when you see these words, they should make you think of the operation that is being performed when you uh, get a sum. If you have a sum, it means that something's being added. If you have a difference, it means something is being subtracted. If you have a product, something is being multiplied. <laughs> if you have a quotient, we are dividing. So today we are focusing on these three things, right? Some difference in product. So we are literally adding, subtracting, and multiplying today. So this is pre-calculus. You guys should be all good at it. But we're doing it with functions, which is a little different. But you guys did it some in uh, algebra too. So if you had me for a teacher which most of you did, most of you are from another, from other schools. But uh, if you had me for a teacher, I know you would have done it. So we're going to start with the sum. When we're talking about functions. The sum is saying that if we have a function f plus a function g of x, we could write it as f of x plus, oops, sorry, plus g of x, right? The difference is subtraction. If we have f minus g, we could break it up as f of x minus g of x, right? Product being, if I have f times g of x, it's like saying f of x times g of x. And we will get into the nitty gritty of all of that. I'll write the quotient one too, even though we're not going over quotient today, just so we have it all in a nice little chart. And I don't have to rewrite the chart next time I see you. If I have f over g, notice that's a fraction because fractions are division, right? They're saying f divided by g of x would give us f of x over g of x, right? But for today, we are just doing this. I kind of like this green pen. I wasn't using green before. It is a new addition for me. 
So let's start with finding the sum. If I am given, say we are given, if given, f of x equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 1. We want to find the sum or find, let's go with find f plus g of x. Then evaluate. Anytime you see evaluate, it means it's going to ask you to plug something in. When x equals, what do I have written down there? Three. So the first thing it's given us is it's giving us two functions, right? It's giving us an f of x function right there. And it's given us, that is weird. I can't believe that's what it turned it into. And it's given us a g of x function. Algebraic square, if I do say so. Right? How did it go from a rectangle to like a, a full polygon, hexagon, I think is what it was. I think it was six said. And it wants us to add our f plus g. It wants us to take f plus g of x. And if you remember, up above, that said that it would be f of x plus g of x right? So here, f of x, well, that's just 2x plus 1, plus our g of x, which is just x squared plus 2x minus 1. When you're adding, you can just write everything down. You don't have to put anything in parentheses because we're just adding these things together. If we are subtracting or multiplying, you want to put your f of x and your g of x in parentheses to understand that it distributes through all of it. But when you're adding, it isn't really necessary to have f of x in parentheses and g of x in parentheses to understand that. Like if we were subtracting, we'd want to distribute that negative through to each piece. If we were multiplying, we'd want to understand that we had to multiply the, the binomials through. But because we're adding, it doesn't really matter if we separate them. All we have to do with addition is combine our like terms, right? And so we start with whatever our highest power is, which is an x squared term, right? If you look uh, here, this is the only square we have. So we are going to lead with x squared. Our, uh, then we'll go on to whatever our next variable is, right? Not, so our next is just 2x, right? We have an x. So we're going to look with any, for anything else that has an x. We have 2x plus 2x, which gives us plus 4x. And then we have 1 minus 1, which goes away entirely. And so we've found our f plus g of x. And now we have to evaluate when x equals 3. So... When x equals 3, we've got 3 squared, right, plus 4 times 3, which is going to give us 9 plus 12, or 21, right? None of that was difficult, was it? Are any of you there? Are you guys even there? Did you all just leave me? It got super hot in this room. All right. Well, I will find out because only Moises answered. So I have a feeling that everyone else fell asleep. 
And so I'm going to have you guys do one. You are going to do, this is, whoops, sorry. This is my you do problem. You are going to do f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 1 minus x. And you are going to find the sum. You're going to find f plus g of x and evaluate evaluate when x equals 2. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to do that. Anybody who does not put an answer into the chat box is absent. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Put an answer in the chat box. Wait, you heard me as absent? Yes. I don't think you can. <laughs> I'm actually here. I'll still attempt it, but don't have hopes for me. <laughs> just give it a shot. You don't have to be right. You just have to try. I'm using, I'm using the chat box for attendance. I'm going to ignore the actual attendance and people who don't participate will be marked absent. So that's what happens when we don't have people on camera. I wouldn't mark you absent though, because you are always on camera. I should probably do it myself too, just to make sure I don't, I don't even know if you're right yet, Moises. I haven't done it. So let's see. It would be. Leah, I'm sure snake is not the answer. Did anybody get something other than three? Let me give everybody a chance to get an answer in. Since I am using it for attendance, right? Well, I know for sure I have attended. What answer did you get? See, I wasn't sure with mine, so I just went with the crowds vote. Mm. Race, because I was, I was. Sometimes it doesn't one. do you very good to I go know, with the crowd. I wasn't confident in my own thing, and I was like, "Well, everyone's getting three. All right. Well, nobody is asking for more time, so I am going to tell you right now that Not you right. are all incredibly right. Okay, so I was right to go with the crowd vote. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't say that you know how to do anything except for trust in your fellow uh, I'm giving them my student. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I guess it depends on... Uh, how the snake is sitting, right? Like if it's in the shape of a three. So here we have our f of x 
plus g of x really is what we're getting at, right? So we've got x squared plus 1 minus x. And if you notice, like, we can't really combine that anymore. We can put it in order, but we can't combine anything on here. Once we've added them together, there's not much we can do, right? Uh, because there's no like terms to put together. So here we just plug in two. So we've got two squared minus two plus one. Two squared is four minus two plus one, which gives us three, right? So, so the answer is donut or zero. So that's how we deal with when we're talking about addition. Subtraction can be a little bit different. It's ultimately the same uh, action when we're talking about difference. But here's the thing. We have to do some distribution um, when we have differences of polynomials, right, or of functions. So I just heard a weird sound that sounded like a snake over here. So if I am given f of x equals, oh, look, I think it's practically the same problem. 2x plus 1. No, that's not the same problem. And g of x equals, oh, it is the same problem. x squared plus 2x minus 1. One. Was that the first same problem we used on the first example? Oh, that's cool because we'll see how it works differently with subtraction. I wrote this down earlier. You'd think I would have figured out that they were the same problem sooner. We want to find f minus g of x and evaluate. when x equals 2. So here we're going to take our f of x, right? We know that f minus g of x equals f of x minus g of x. And we know that f of x is 2x plus 1, so we're going to say we've got 2x plus 1 minus our g of x, which is x squared plus 2x minus 1. There is a difference this time in that this minus has to be distributed to each piece of the function that it's in front of. So if you look at it, our 2x plus 1 that's going to be exactly the same. But this has to be distributed to here. So it would be negative x squared, right? This would be minus 2x. And then when we distribute it here, it becomes plus 1. So oh, that's why you want to keep things in parentheses so you understand that that distribution has to go. That minus is applied to everything. Because we're not just saying minus x squared. If we just put the minus and wrote it like 2x plus 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1, it looks like we're only subtracting the x squared, right? But it's minus x squared. It's also minus 2x, and it's also minus negative 1, right? Which is why we don't write it like this. It's why we put it in parentheses to make sure we distribute that minus so we know that we're applying that minus to each piece. And so now you're just going to combine your like terms, and we're going to start with a negative x squared. Then we have 2x minus 2x. Well, that, that's just nothing, right? And then we have 1 plus 1, so we have plus 2. So what we're left with at this point is negative x squared plus 2. And so for when x equals two evaluation, we're just going to go negative two squared plus two, which gives us negative four 
plus 2, which just gives us negative 2. I'm going to give you guys another problem, and I'm going to hope that Aaliyah's answer isn't donut this time or snake. Um, we're going to go, what happens when we have, oh, did I not write one down for difference? I probably was like, they can get that one. Forget that. I want to write one down anyways. So given... f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 1 minus x. Is it the same problem? Find f minus g of x and then we're going to evaluate when x equals 3. So this is your problem to do. When you get an answer, put it in the chat box. If you're copying someone else's answer, be ready to defend your answer. Be prepared. Be prepared to defend your answer with your life. Just for drama. Now I'm cold. Now the air condition has come on in here and I'm cold. What's that? Well, I mean, it probably has happened. Like those people who like prove math and get credit for that and the prizes. I'm having an issue here with my jacket being wrapped up in my chair. That was bad. Before I was hot, now I'm cold. I can't seem to make up my mind about that. Getting sevens and eleven, which makes me want a Slurpee. Does everyone have their answer in yet, or is it, or are people still working on it? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine answers. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and seven. There's 15 of you, and only nine of you have answered. There are going to be a lot of people absent today. Leah's taking that riskier route, right? And going with the 11. She's not going with the crowd. She's joining Moises, standing strong by her beliefs. 
Alicia, on the other hand, is going the other route because they're trying to cover their bases as sisters, figuring, well, one will be right and the other one will be wrong. We don't know which one, right? There's only one answer. You only get one answer. If you put seven slash 11, you owe me a Slurpee by the end of day. <laughs> the real question is who is right if anybody? And the answer to that would be Moises and Aaliyah are correct. I am not given, okay, I will now because you came in at the end with the 11, but let's look at this really quick, right? Here we've got, oh, I was trying to write on this with my regular pencil. <laughs> that doesn't work. So we've got our one minus X, right? And we have our X squared minus one minus X. People forgot to distribute, right? Here we wind up with X squared minus one plus X, right? It's got to change the sign of everything in there. So when I write that and I make X three, that's going to give me three squared minus one plus three or nine minus one plus three. Nine minus one is eight plus three equals 11. Definitely have to do that distribution, right? It's kind of important. And by kind of, I mean totally important. The fate of the world depends upon it. Math runs the world, remember? That means the people who can do it run the world. Last bit, right, for us. We're going to talk about product, then we're going to be done for the day. Ooh, thank God. Right? I am tired. It has been a long day of mathing. We are talking about products. I like products. I like to buy things. I like those kind of products, but we aren't talking about those kind of products. We are talking about multiplication. So here, if I have been given, if I am given f of x equals, do you think we're going to use the same problem again? No. I'm going to throw you off this time. I'm going to use a completely different problem. I'm going to do, given f of x equals x squared, and g of x equals x minus 3, we want to find f times g of x. This goes in here. Right? And what we know about that is that if we have fg of x, it equals f of x times g of x, right? It's all multiplication. So what are we saying? Well, we're saying we know that f of x is x squared, so we're saying that it equals x squared times x minus 3. Here's the deal. This is like putting it right next to it, right? It would be x squared times x minus 3. This gets distributed. x squared times x equals x cubed. x squared times minus 3 equals minus 3x squared, right? We want to evaluate this one. I forgot to write that part down. When x equals, I don't know, I don't remember. Hopefully something small. When x equals 4. That is not small. But we can do this, right? What it ultimately means is we are plugging in 4 everywhere there's an x. So I have 4 cubed. 
minus 3 times 4 squared. Well, 4 cubed is 64. So I'm saying minus 3 times 16, right? 4 squared is 16, which is going to give me 64 minus 48, which should give me 16. That's kind of pretty. I like that one. So I'm going to save you the you do part because we're already at 102. There's only six minutes left in this class. I want to take it to, to let you ask questions, um, <coughs> to just be overall goofy, and to understand what is expected of you this weekend. What is expected of you this weekend is to complete any assignments you haven't already completed. Email me if there's something that you need extended, let me know. I don't normally bring my email home with me on the weekend, but I will be checking it this weekend because I know that you guys have work to get done. Most importantly, if you have not done the quiz, do the quiz. I'm begging you, please, please, please do the quiz because that quiz is technically 50% of your whole grade at this point because it's the only test-like thing we've had all year, right? So your whole life basically depends on whether or not you completed this quiz, which is why I've been lagging and grading it because I want to get people to finish. Oh, yeah, is that your work? All right. Submit the work if you want to be able to get partial credit. Please don't forget to do that part. Otherwise, you're stuck with whatever grades you actually get in uh, WebAssign. Um, there's no partial credit if you don't submit your work. But if you're happy with that grade, no biggie. Um, and that is all I have for you. You guys are free. Go free, frolic, enjoy your weekend. I hope you have a good one. Don't fall in a hole and stay there. Bye, Leah. Have a good weekend. You two boys, thank you. Bye, Anthony. Brenda, Thomas, you guys there? Probably not. Probably. Oh, Brenda's there. Have a good weekend, Brenda. Jameson, you could sign out. You do not have to be on the computer anymore. You're right there. I can see. I'm going to stay on the computer. All right, you're allowed. Bye, Brenda. I'm going to kick Thomas. In. <laughs> bye. I never know how to do that. Would I like it? Bye. Yeah, that's what I do with it. Ask them, uh, what is it? Um...